Right now, a significant ice storm is impacting south central portion of the United States, where we're, we are seeing a large area of freezing rain going on right in between Missouri and Arkansas, and even extending as far east as Kentucky and the southern portions of Illinois and Indiana. And this area of freezing rain is expected to weaken as it continues ahead further eastward but we should begin to see more areas of freezing rain develop as we approach a Tuesday and Wednesday time frame further southward into Texas where the instability will increase as we head more and more into the future but for now keep on um, pay close attention to the freezing rain that's going on for your evening commute in a lot of these areas because the roads certainly will be slippery as a result of this freezing rain that's expected to continue for the rest of the evening before it eventually moves further eastward Take a look at what the European model is forecasting over the next several hours when it comes to this freezing rain threat. If we were to continue to move forward, we do see that this area of freezing rain is eventually expecting to move northeastward, like I said, as a result of the strong jet stream winds that are pretty much forcing this area of freezing rain to move further northeastward. You could see some snow showers in isolated areas of northeast. In fact, we are seeing some snow showers right now go on in upstate New York and portions of Pennsylvania. So you could maybe see some snow showers tomorrow very early on Tuesday if the temperature is cold enough in your location in the northeast and if I were to continue to move forward we do see that this area of low pressure uh, pressure is actually continuing to move further eastward and there's going to be a decent amount of cold air behind it and we're just going to see just enough of a jet stream dip to the point where it's going to interact with this very warm moist environment just north of the gulf of mexico and that's going to create another area of freezing rain to develop and as a result of a persistent ridge that's built over the midwest at this time that's bringing a strong northeasterly flow against this southwesterly flow that's going to create the freezing rain threat because we're going to see enough of a warm air intrusion tomorrow to pretty much melt the snow that's falling in the higher levels of the atmosphere melt uh, melt it and then freeze it once it reaches the surface because the temperatures along the surface will be below freezing which will of course create the possibility of freezing rain throughout texas and oklahoma so tuesday i'd say tuesday morning and into tuesday afternoon that's where you should see your next round of freezing rain for texas and oklahoma so for your morning commute you need to pay very close attention especially in the dallas area as the possibility of freezing rain definitely does increase as we approach the morning time um tomorrow so continuing to move forward with the forecast we see another area of freezing rain in this and I'd say the Wednesday the Wednesday time frame, that's when the worst of the freezing rain should occur for Texas. That's when we're going to see the just enough convection to create that possibility of a dangerous freezing rain threat. And that's where you could potentially see the worst of the ice accumulation for much of Texas and southern Oklahoma, where we're going to see the most convection. And we do see continuing to move forward. This will extend into the later afternoon time on Wednesday. And eventually, the good news is that the temperature should should rise above freezing along the surface which will of course reduce or minimize the freezing rain threat that's expected to occur on Wednesday but um, but for the most part, for much of Wednesday morning and afternoon, that's where you should expect very dangerous road conditions. So it might be best to stay home in some areas right around northern Texas because that freezing rain threat will, of course, be very significant and um, long lasting before the temperature eventually rises above freezing along the surface as a result of this ridge that's expected to move further eastward, which will prevent the northeasterly winds from cooling down temperature along the surface once this low pressure continues to move further eastward warming up the surface temperatures a little bit more for the freezing rain threat to subside as we approach late wednesday into early thursday and even further eastward into arkansas you could get involved with freezing rain on tuesday i'd say tuesday will be the worst of the freezing rain for you guys and into very early on wednesday for the memphis area and portions of eastern i mean western tennessee and i'd say the worst of the freezing rain for texas and oklahoma will be on wednesday when the most convection occurs throughout the state of texas so definitely pay very close attention to that the certainty is high with this freezing rain that the gfs model is showing a very similar depiction so at this point you need to prepare for a significant freezing rain threat for texas and oklahoma but however beyond this ice storm we um for the much of the northern united states you need to pay close attention to an arctic blast i expected to move through by the late week because we're gonna see 
a pretty powerful trough move just north of the United States border. That's going to bring a strong northwesterly flow as well of this pressure gradient between this ridge and of course this trough moving southward and that's going to bring temperatures well below zero for many areas along the northeastern portions of the United States and continuing to move forward we see that Friday into Saturday that's when you should expect the worst of the cold for much of the northeast and even the northern Great Lakes let me show you guys the forecast of temperatures for the Friday and Saturday time frame for those areas so these are the forecasted temperatures from the European model's latest depiction. We do see that in Texas and Oklahoma, temperatures are below freezing along the surface, which is the reason why a freezing rain threat is expected over the next several days before the temperature eventually does rise above freezing, which will subside the freezing rain threat as we head into Thursday. But moving forward into the more long-term future, we see that as this cold front moves through, we see temperatures well below zero for much of the northern Midwest, where we see a temperature reading of negative nine right around the Minneapolis area, negative 16 um, right between the border of North Dakota and Minnesota. And we do see that the temperatures will quickly um, fall into the single digits for much of the Northeast, where we see a temperature reading of 11, six right around Rochester, New York, six degrees in Northern Michigan and nine degrees in Detroit. And moving even more forward into the, the more long-term future, we see temperature readings in the negative 20s for the extreme interior portions of northeast where we see a temperature reading of negative 20 in may negative 22 in the northern portion of vermont um, negative 12 right around albany and we see temperatures in the single digits in new york city and below zero in the boston area where boston could re receive a temperature reading that's close to negative 10 which would be very significant and in fact is forecasted to receive a temperature reading that's in the negative um, teens which is very very significant significant you need to pay very close attention to that and then new york city we could see a very cool temperature reading as well where there's that possibility temperatures could fall below zero in new york city which is extremely rare in any given winter so you want to pay very close attention to that especially on friday night saturday morning and pretty much all throughout Friday and Saturday, it's going to be much colder than average for much of the northern United States. We see a temperature reading of negative 11 in Scranton, and it's just going to be cold all around. And then the highs won't be much better as the highs might not even reach the 20s in some areas of northern New Jersey. And um, and it will struggle to reach the teens as a high um, on um, going into Sunday, that's for certain. So you want to pay very close attention to the very cool temperatures but the good news is that the temperatures should um fall back down to earth or i should say rise back up to earth um as the temperatures should um rise right around the 40s by the the sunday time frame as well of a stronger southerly flow we're going to see at um from a trough that's expected to move through so that's some of the good news that temperatures won't last um that the cool temperatures won't last that long but for friday and saturday make sure to pay close attention to arctic blast moving through the northeastern portion of the United States. In terms of the precipitation forecast over the more long-term future, there is that possibility that we would see a little bit more snow um, for portions of the mid-Atlantic, but it won't be much. And um, But for the most part, there isn't that high of a chance for snow for much of the eastern half of the United States as a result of the persistent ridge that keeps on staying over the eastern half of the United States, which is bringing too strong of a southerly flow to bring much cold and snow um, to the, the eastern half of the United States. So it, might be, uh, so it might be a little bit quiet when it comes to snowfall, but just keep in mind for that possibility of of temperatures much colder than average for the eastern half of the United States. Take a look at the ice accumulation forecast, and this is very significant. Many areas of Texas, southern Oklahoma, as well as a large portion of Arkansas and the eastern, I mean the western portions of Tennessee and the northwestern portion of Mississippi. You should expect anywhere from a quarter of an inch to half of an inch of ice, which is just very significant that likely will cause power outages over a widespread area and that will cause dangerous road conditions. So I emphasize if you don't need to go out, try your best just not to drive out on the roadways because they're going to be so because it, the roads are going to be very slippery, very dangerous. And you don't at all want to take that risk, especially when you could experience up to a half 
of an inch of ice and even some portions of texas could experience up to three quarters of an inch of ice or close to an inch of ice which would just cause um, catastrophic devastation when it especially when it comes to power outages and then would cause and it would definitely make the roads extremely extremely dangerous once we go above the 0.5 um, inches of ice threshold so you want to pay very close attention to that um, for much of texas and oklahoma so here's my forecast when it comes to this major ice storm so if you're in the pink you need to pay very close attention to major ice as it's very very likely you will experience major ice associated with this storm system for texas now oklahoma the worst should be on wednesday and then further eastward i'd say the worst will be tomorrow so in memphis make sure to keep that in mind for your evening commute tomorrow and for um and for portions of arkansas also keep that in mind for tomorrow and then um for the late week make sure to be prepared for very cool temperatures for the, the much of the northeastern portions of the united states but i uh, think you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content